Today, we're attempting to break some records. We're going for the world's largest front porch welcome sign, and we'll show you if we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're going big. Big for the front porch. Record breaking big front porch welcome signs. We're looking to introduce some new summer designs, some new fun things for summer. And this is two of them. We have a new home sweet home front porch leaner and a welcome summer front porch leaner. But we thought we'd have some fun with it. So it's not your average front porch leaner. We will offer them regular size, but the one we're doing today is going to be 12 feet tall. Record-breaking. Really, tall. really showcase that new design. That's yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know if we could go any bigger. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna gather all of our materials. We need two one by 12s by 12 foot, so we have to run to the home improvement shop for those. Those one by 12s were way taller and way heavier than I thought they would be. We're gonna use one fence picket to put a cross brace at the top and the bottom to hold these one by 12s together. And then we're gonna stain them, paint them, and then what, oh, and some MDF letters that we've cut extra big so they really yeah. showcase that design and we'll paint those too. And some screws to hold it together. I don't know if the regular brads will be able to hold this ginormous sign together. I see what you're doing. Right about here, a gentleman walks up with a face mask on that says safe light glass repair and cautioned us against putting the one by 12 in our vehicle up against the front windshield. So we did a little adjusting and we got it in there without breaking a windshield on the way home. <laughs> Step two, uh, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're really just cutting this picket down to 22 and a half inches, just two cuts. And then we'll head over to the Glowforge and cut out all of our gigantic letters. Yeah, but for, for the picket, I think we should just use um, the pocket saw. <laughs> a big bad for a minute, I wasn't sure what I would use. We were gonna take pocket saw outside with us, but they're doing a little construction down the street. And guess what? His truck only goes in reverse because <laughs> yeah. it is beep, beep, beep. That we couldn't, we had to come in here and finish filming because parts of it. Part of, I can't bring this one by 12s in here. They're just too long. Too big. We don't have the room. Yeah, so I'm going to have to finish those outside. But this part, we can do it in here. I'm not gonna use pass-through for everything, but I am gonna use it for the stuff that won't fit in the regular bed. Anything that's bigger than 11 by 20. It's like this watermelon. So I'm gonna set focus and print. Now it is gonna take pictures, so it has something to compare it to in a second. When I move the material, I'm gonna shift the material down. First, I'm gonna tape it off so it doesn't get caught on the honeycomb bed. Sometimes little pieces and edges will get cut. Now it's gonna take pictures again and compare it to what it just did. It lines up perfectly, look at that. Great. We're gonna do it again one more time, take some more pictures. I'm gonna shift the material down just a, a smidge. I just gotta Catch the edge of that last little piece of the watermelon. And everything else, I'm just gonna cut regular in the Glowforge. I think I might have the M's that won't fit. Step three. Now we stain. Well, now Kim stains. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't actually do any staining. I don't like staining. I don't like painting. You know what I forgot to grab that you can go get while I'm staining? A popsicle? 
<laughs> I need something to wipe the stain off. I need an old t-shirt or something. Oh, sort. I'll go find an old t-shirt. Shirt. Now it's a <laughs> smock and rags. <laughs> I'd rather have the t-shirt one. <laughs> Hope we didn't do that for nothing. <laughs> oh, it's a smock. <laughs> Sun's out, guns out. We are outside. Oh, now we paint. That is We're going to paint all of our giant letters and my giant watermelon. <laughs> I mean, that's how big I take a bit. Like, literally, that is a bite size. So Perfect. This is the size of watermelon I usually eat right there. And we're going to use a new technique, something we haven't shown you yet from Country Chic. We're going to add some colors. These are going to be multicolored. Uh, home Sweet Home is going to be white, but our summer, Welcome Summer, is going to be multicolored. And so we're going to use our Country Chic paints. You can get these on our website. And if you go to countrychicpaint.com and you go to colors, if you scroll to the bottom, they'll show you different, what, formulas, recipes? Yeah, recipes. Yeah, different, different recipes for mixing colors. So I want an orange. The two oranges that we have with a twist and sparklers are more for Halloween. You've seen us use these in the fall a lot. Fallish, yeah. But what I want is a bright summer orange. And so there's a cute little recipe to mix in the orange that I want. And I also want for the watermelon, I don't want this to be bright red because I'm using spring colors here. So we're gonna make this like a, like Super a- Super ripe. Pinky red, a oh, pinky, pinky red, yes. And so I have a recipe for that red too. So let's go ahead and get our Mix on. Oh, mix them up. Yes. Mix them if you got them. So we're going to use something called carrot, which oh. is five parts mustard, yeah. one part cranberry sauce. Okay. Yes, this is what I wanted. Awesome. You want to go right in with this? Yeah, I think that's right. Don't you think? Yeah. This orange. It's definitely not the same as these other two oranges. So isn't that perfect? Oh, yeah, it's definitely lighter. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. That was pretty easy. That's perfect. Just kind of a guesstimation. Yeah, I'm just yeah. looking for something in between these two. All right, and now for this, I have another recipe. One part devotion. Okay. That's your bright so red. Nice yep, uh-huh. And then one part mustard. Oh, really? Hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah. And then two parts cherry blossom. Okay, that makes sense. All right, look at that. All right, tell me what you're working with. Like mixing up the toppings on the top of a Whopper. Now we're gonna yeah. use that whole scrape technique that we used in our last video. Doing the same thing on this video. Right, because we're trying to make this go fast. This is a long fast. board, so I don't, don't want to do any sanding. Yeah. yeah. And I want to save some paint. We're gonna start in the middle or on an end. On an end. Mm -hmm. 
So my lesson learned here is just keep going. I don't know why I keep stopping here, but in a later shot, you'll see where I can carry this all the way down the board. And I like that consistent look. Now this gives you a little more of a distressed look, but yeah, what am I doing? Why do I keep stopping here? Just keep going. Okay, Fezra. Fezra said keep going too. <laughs> yeah, it just looks so much nicer if you just keep going. It gives it a nice consistent look. So I'm going to try it here again and see what we can do. All right, here we go. See, this is much better. I can come all the way down the board. Isn't that perfect? Step five, and now we're gonna assemble it. We're gonna glue down the braces and screw them in with a one and a quarter inch screw. And then we're gonna glue down all the letters and hit those with a little three quarter inch brad. The nail, not the guy. <laughs> I'm just using some Gorilla Wood Glue. Right before I use my inch and quarter screw, I'm just using some Craig Jig screws since they're self-tapping. And I'm using the Gorilla Contact Cement. This is the one that suggests that you wait two minutes before you turn it over so that it gets a little bit tacky. But since we'll be nailing them, I didn't bother waiting. They'll yeah. dry. I'm using a three quarter inch brad. The nail, and not the guy. Move the brace down, move that sawhorse down Lift. so it's under the brace. Lift this. All right, now we'll flip it. Second side, same as the first. You would be surprised to, to know how heavy this is. You see it sagging in the middle? That's because it's heavier than it looks. Oh, it no, it looks heavy. <laughs> Let's stand this beast up. Let's break some records. Moment of truth. I'll get the top. You get the bottom? Okay. I got the bottom. There. Now you can see the whole thing. But wait, it's reversible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I think you gotta stand it up for him. That's it, that is, that is it. That's as far as it's going. Isn't it cute though? I know it's giant size, but it's so cute. think we set records we break records is this not the world's largest <laughs> <laughs> reversible front porch sign yes but more importantly isn't it a cute summer theme yeah I love it yeah it's definitely cute but it's cute in like a giant way well like, you can find a normal size one in our store at kgmakeit.com <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're about out of time. I have to go, and we will see you next week where we'll do a build it and make it again. I'm not, no. there's not a chance <laughs> no, I'm bouncing this thing. No. Here, but let's turn heavy. it around again for that. Ready? <laughs>
can see the whole thing? I, well, I think you can. The camera's so far away, I can't tell. Yeah, I know. The camera's like way over there. All right, intro. Yeah. Pretty big. 